Mount Gambier, Australia's cave country. Our intrepid group from Global Dive New Zealand embark on a week of training and cave diving. We're staying at Habitat 99, or the Habby as it's affectionately known. The walls are adorned with cave maps, including the amazing Tank Cave. We start the trip with a shakedown dive at Ewan's Ponds. At 60 metres, the visibility is stunning. Ewan's comprises three ponds connected by shallow channels, each flowing to the next. The ponds are springs with water flowing in from the limestone below. Our team take in the view while checking out our equipment and practicing skills. My shakedown done. It's time for cave checkout at the Pines Cave with my buddy and guide for the week, Josh Richards. Josh leads me on a series of routes, spoking out from a tree stump near the open water. It's a chance to practice moving through the cave, learn some of the routes and pass a couple of restrictions. Checkouts are done and Daryl and I prepare our gear for the day ahead. Tank Cave, the jewel in the crown for the Mount Gambier region. Tank is a literal labyrinth of flooded cave passage and our excitement builds as we prepare for the first dive. Down a ladder and we access a short dry cave section which leads to the water. The mapped cave has a number of permanent guidelines named in alphanumeric, currently A to S. We start on A line and over the course of five dives we'll build up routes to help me learn and understand the cave. I loved this part between A3 and 4 known as the shortcut. We turned at A5 as we head to the junction at A6 or T as it's known. Some passages are narrow but others are the size of ballrooms. Always in the cave, I focus on precision, fin technique, and buoyancy control. We reach the end of F line, turn and head for home. I'm signaling the way out. I tie in a jump spool at B14 to connect us to H line on our journey deeper into the cave. One of the golden rules of cave diving is always to have a continuous guideline to our exit. Time for some fun. The cave narrows at a section known as the go track. It's not too bad, there's not much silt and it's easy to see your way through. And on the other side, we swim towards our prize and a look at the beautiful elephant room. Here the lines form a circuit and I confirm our navigation with Josh. Some careful fin technique as the cave narrows. back to the goat track. A little easier this time, gently easing forward, looking for space. I recover our jump spool as we head back to B14. And heading for home, past A11, Josh and I enter the majestic Lake Eyre. A massive room. 
Its entirety is difficult to light, but we take a moment to enjoy the view. Continuing towards the exit, another landmark, the drill hole at A8. I light signal OK to confirm our navigation with Josh as we pass a T intersection at A6. And back to the shortcut. I love manoeuvring through this section. All the time I'm thinking. Nothing but net. We're nearing the exit now and Josh captures some epic footage. And we're all smiles at the end of the dive. Next, the famous Killsby sinkhole, another Mount Gambier signature dive and it's cool to be back with some of my Kiwi buddies, Andrew, Dave and Daryl. The view through the gin clear water has to be seen to be believed. And what better than tasting the famous Killsby gin made from the very water that we just left. Our host Graham Killsby explains how the gin is made and we enjoy some post dive banter. The signature dives keep coming and we finish with a rope entry to the shaft. Words escape me. How do you describe the indescribable? Up to 120 meters deep, the size of a football field, the shaft is simply immense. Shafts of light penetrate the water from the small opening above. Follow the light. Down. Down. Down to the rock pile. More than 35 meters below. I end the dive and our trip bathed in light.